Hi, I'm Loretta Bush, President and CEO for Authority Health. And this year, me and my team are joining thousands of people around the world commemorating World AIDS Day. For over 30 years now, uh, on December 1st, we have commemorated World AIDS Day. And we've done this for a few reasons. One is we want to show support for those who are living with HIV and AIDS. We also want to remember and honor those who have lost their battle with this disease. Mm -hmm. But then also, one of the things that's very important, we use this time to bring awareness to prevention, to how it's transmitted, also to now encourage people to know their status, get tested, and get early treatment. Now for full disclosure, I have to tell you, I'm right here with two of my favorite people in the world. I asked them to join me, not only to share their personal experience, but also to bring awareness and some share some education around prevention, transmission, and how to stay healthy. Uh, Paula and Felix Cyrils, they are not only striving uh, and surviving with HIV they are thriving with Amen. HIV now the best way for me to introduce them is to say they are all that they are husband <laughs> and wife they are parents they are grandparents they're <laughs> HIV advocates they're educators and most importantly they uh, are strong in what they believe and they are strong in this fight about HIV and AIDS Paula, Felix, I'm going to turn it over to you. And why don't you two start off by just uh, telling the listeners what HIV is, about prevention, and then also sharing some about your personal journey. Wow. First and foremost, thank you so much for the invitation. It's always an honor and a pleasure to talk about what we love to do and who we are, most importantly. Yes. So with that said, um, HIV stands for Human Immunity deficiency virus. It is a virus. Uh, a lot of folks always uh, try to make a difference between HIV and AIDS. And long term, since we don't have a lot of time, we always say that AIDS is HIV at long term. Advanced so, HIV. Advanced HIV. Mm -hmm. In order to have or acquire AIDS, you have, have to have had HIV. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. All right. And it's to get in you, not to get on you virus. And today, with the medications, uh, if a person becomes undetectable, they become untransmittable. So it's important that people who are positive get into care and treatment so that they can protect themselves and others. Also, with um, uh, medications that really support persons that are not positive but may have put themselves at risk, there are wonderful treatments and medication that people can take who are negative to stay negative. Wow. So um, the three of us, we've been on this journey for a long time. Did you ever think that you would be talking to an audience, talking about mm. being, having the virus suppressed, having it where it's non-detectable, uh, where you're not able to transmit? Did you ever think that we'd uh, get to this? And well, I know we're, we're people who really believe that all things are possible. possible. So, yes, uh, but man, we've <coughs> come a long way from when we first started uh, as mm -hmm. HIV educators and talking about yes. what people can do to keep themselves safe. Now, you know, we still want to talk about that, though. So uh, let's tell our listeners about how HIV is transmitted and what they can do to prevent it. Because even in this day and age, every day there's uh, new infections being transmitted. Right? Mm -hmm. Most definitely. We talk about, number one, um, self-esteem and a person caring enough about themselves to protect themselves. No matter what a person's lifestyle is, it is not inevitable that they ever acquire HIV. So HIV first is spread through blood, semen, vaginal fluid, and breast milk. Uh, and spinal fluid. So we're lo looking at the main issues, which is sexually transmitted uh, virus and uh, peritoneal transmission mother to child. Uh, that's why in the second trimester, generally a woman is tested for HIV. And, um, and if she is positive, that child is treated and um, therefore the child is not born with HIV. It's important also to understand that um, no one has to acquire the virus that does not have it. And if they do have it, if they get on medication, then they can live a long, healthy life, uh, taking care of themselves and not transmitting to others. You get the virus through unprotected sex. You get the virus through sharing uh, blood-borne equipment, such as needles, 
uh, such as uh, unsterilized equipment for tattoos. Um, you, so it's a blood-to-blood contact. It's a get in you, not a get on you, and it's important to understand that. That's important. So we want to move away from the myths. It's not a get on you. It's a get in you. So we're talking about sexual transmission and we're talking about transmission through needles and we're talking about uh, transmission from mother to child if the mother is infected. So um, let's talk a little bit then about uh, the C word, condoms. (laughs) So is condoms still uh, uh, one of the tools in our toolbox? Oh, definitely. Um, We always promote condoms because if you use it correctly it works uh we talk to a lot of uh we talk to a lot of people youth and seniors and i talk to a lot of seniors because the first thing out of their mouth is you know these kids are not listening they're not using condoms and they're not wrapping it up well you guys are using it viagra let's okay. get real so now we're talking about up. the v word <laughs> right <laughs> so they're not wrapping it up either yeah but they do work, and uh, for the most part, uh, many women seniors feel they can't get pregnant, so they don't want to, or feel that they need to use condoms. Mm-hmm. But we still promote them anyway, and we have to really educate them on how to use them, when to use them, and it's okay to use them, but they have to be 100% latex. Yes. Not cheap skin. Yep. And uh, it's a proper way to put it on. And there are some issues when it comes to seniors' uh, erectile dysfunction, other issues uh, that create issues where um, males generally, if they use a condom because of their age and what they're going through, it's very difficult for them to really have an erection and to really complete. Um, And so many of them uh, do not feel that they can use condoms, and they don't. And because uh, they're of a certain age, uh, many women feel that they can't get pregnant, so they're not going to become infected, not understanding that there are other sexually transmitted diseases out there, including HIV. So it is important to use protection. There's also female condoms. There are other protections out there that if women are aware of them, such as dental dams, that can be used (laughs) to protect females, but they have to be made aware that they are available and they have to learn how to advocate for themselves to protect themselves. That's right. So, you know, I just want to say to our listeners, that's just real talk. Uh, Because you said something, Felix, uh, a while back that no matter what your lifestyle is, you don't have to become HIV infected. But you do have to know how to prevent it, right? So you need to be able to talk about condoms. You Mm -hmm. need to be able to talk about those barriers around using condoms and dental dams so that when people do what they do, they know how to do that safely and not become HIV infected. So I'm going to pause for just a little bit of a commercial break. So many of you may know that at Popoff Family Health Center, we provide HIV counseling and testing. And we can also help you talk through some of the issues that Paula and Felix have described. So let me just tell you about the address. The address is 10809 Mac Avenue. Give us a call at 313 824-1000. That's Pop-Off Family Health Center for HIV counseling and testing, and we can help you talk through many of the issues that uh, that Paula and Felix have described. Want to talk about a little bit about your personal journey because you two are uh, long-term not only survivors but thrivers. So uh, talk a little bit about that. I like that term, long-term thrivers who survived. In the beginning, like you stated earlier, um, I never thought I would be here 20 years later after Mm -hmm. disclosing. uh, And disclosing your status to anyone is not easy. Never have been easy for me, but today it's a little easier because I have the education surrounding it. So it makes it a little easier for me. But I can't say that for everybody because everybody's journey is different. Yes. When I met Felix, Felix had already had so much experience. He was an advocator top of the line and he was advocating for services for people living with HIV he came from a state uh, three different states that had implemented a whole lot of programs and uh, lifestyles to help people who are uh, early diagnosed live with it on a daily basis and getting a lot of that education early on and allowing me to face uh, one of the things that I thought would take me out Yes. Because I tried to take myself out as a result because I didn't want to live with it. Um, I'm here today. 
Here today. I am here today. And uh, I got to say this, uh, because a lot of folks always ask, when he was working in the field, he wouldn't talk to me at all as an advocate. He was doing his job. And lo and behold, for me, uh, that place that I was going to get my treatment lost their funding. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So it was a plus for me because I was able to talk to him after that. He wouldn't talk to me during that. So he asked for my phone number after. He said, well, can I contact you later on? I said, you know you got my information in your, lo- in your little cabinet. He said, I can't use it unless you allow me to have it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, you know, and I think yeah. that's, that's an important, that's important. piece. That was very that important. That people need yeah. to understand that this whole issue of A being HIV infected is, is confidential, right? Yes, yes, we it want is. to, it you is. know, move yeah. away from uh, shame and stigma. But you need to know that being HIV infected, that's a confidential thing and that the people who you interact with must keep that uh, confidential. You said something vitally important, too, that we are still dealing with today. Mm-hmm. We got new medications. We yeah. went from 35 pills twice a day to one pill a day, mm-hmm. once a day. Everything in the realm of HIV and AIDS to some degree in the 90s, or excuse me, in the late 80s, and then the 90s, and now the 2000s, has shifted a great deal. But the stigma of living with HIV has not. That's yeah. the one thing in this whole entire field that has not changed. Yes. Not one bit. Yeah. So the stigma is still there. It's still there. Yeah, it's yeah. still there in many, and we work um, to end that stigma, um, and especially within the church communities, mm-hmm. um, uh, but also in, in industry. Uh, when I became, uh, when I found out that I had GRID, gay-related immune disorder, mm-hmm. I lived in San Francisco as a paramedic and an LVN, licensed vocational nurse. And um, I'd seen early cases of, uh, of people dying very quickly from an unknown virus. Um, I'd had a knee replacement and uh, blood transfusions. Um, so when I was diagnosed, I was given a year to live. That was 37 years ago. All right. And that doctor has <laughs> ascended and moved on, and I'm still here uh-huh. uh, 37 Amen. years later. I was um, put on, finally, I, I didn't take any medication because there was no medication to take at that time. And then uh, the first medication came out, and it was given at such high doses that people were um, uh, becoming chem- chemically poisoned. So I didn't take that, and I became vegan and um, uh, and uh, started looking for um, health uh, alternatives. Uh, alternatives that could really assist me uh, with my health. So mm-hmm. after seven years of being positive and, um, and uh, looking at the calendar and seeing I was still here and being surprised, I uh, clinically died. I had bronchial pneumonia, spinal meningitis, temp- um, and I weighed 89 pounds. And I had clinically died after seven years. Um, but uh, at San Francisco General, General, it brought me back to life. Um, and so at that time, I really dedicated myself to educating uh, other people and myself on HIV because back then, it was, you couldn't be talked about. It was a secret. It was mm-hmm. private. It was shameful. Um, the stig- stigmata was all over one's being. Um, people fought to get um, a medical care and they would go to Canada or to Mexico mm-hmm. to acquire medications that weren't allowed in the States yet, uh, even having to sue some pharmaceutical companies to sure. acquire those medications. Mm-hmm. So from taking 37 pills, <laughs> when I finally went on medication, I now take two. Um, and, it, it, and that's once a day rather than two or three times a day, yeah. um, which is vitally important. But I have a thing called OLD, <laughs> old age. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so at 72, I have many ailments. And also, uh, HIV is a, is a virus that uh, ages persons. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are a lot of complications in relationship to the amount of medication in the body and how the body functions. So it's very important that one still receives medical care. But everything that I have is not related to HIV. <laughs> Some so. of it is related to OLD. Some of it is related right, to OLD. Right. <laughs> what a wonderful condition to be able to have, though, right? Amen. Amen. That's another thing that, uh, you know, when you mention grid, that takes us way, way back, back, right? Early and 80s. so to be sitting here, you know, what, 37 years? Years yes. later, you know that that's amazing. 
It's absolutely, absolutely. But it's also, you know, the combination of the care that you've taken of yourself, yes. the care that you take of each other, and then the advances in, uh, in medical, in medical treatment. But you have to have a will to live. And a will to live. And a, and a will to give back because right. giving back helps one to maintain life. Amen. So it's really important that, um, that you build self-esteem and that you build caring for yourself and for others. So we've touched on the issue of treatment. When you uh, first started talking, you mentioned uh, viral suppression, and I think we, you mentioned briefly PrEP and yes. maybe PEP. So as we start to wind up, let's talk a little bit more about that so that viewers will know. You know, a couple of years ago, um, I actually um, had the privilege of being a guest on a talk show, and I talked about prep. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they were like, "What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, how, right, right, there's right. something out here that can actually a pill that someone can take yes. that could actually mm -hmm. help them prevent getting HIV, even if they're exposed." Mm -hmm. So now we're seeing more about it, you know, advertised in magazines and on television. Yes. But this is yet an another opportunity to get the message out. So let's talk yeah. about okay, uh, pep and prep. Yeah. Uh, well, number one, pep. Um, post exposure pro prophylaxis. If a nurse or someone injures themselves, if they have a needle stick or something they can take for 28 days, they will take PEP pre exposure prophylaxis, which really prevents a person, helps a person not acquire HIV if they have a possible exposure. So that's post exposure. Post exposure. Okay. So pre exposure prophylaxis or PrEP uh, can be taken by a person uh, for. Uh, continually for their lifespan to prevent HIV if they have a high-risk lifestyle, uh, if they're with someone who is positive and that person may not be undetectable yet. All of those are reasons to take PrEP. Uh, PrEP is wonderful. There are several medications that can be used and one would contact their doctor and talk to them about the best thing for them. But it, the fact is that they can take medication and not have to worry about becoming positive in the future. PrEP takes uh, 28, you would have to take it for two months to really get into your system before you would, your risk would end. But it's important to understand that even taking PrEP, you can get other STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Good point. Um, Good point. So PrEP is not a cure-all. It is a prevention against HIV, but it's not a prevention against all STDs. So I'm Loretta Bush, President and CEO of Authority Health. I'm here talking with uh, Paula and Felix Searles, they are not only long-term survivors living with HIV, but also long-term th thrivers. We wanted to come to you today uh, to, to commemorate World AIDS Day. The theme this year is ending the HIV AIDS epidemic community by community. And we know that that's vitally important. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I didn't mention in the introduction when I said that they're, you know, husband and wife, their parents, their grandparents, also, Felix is a poet, <laughs> and Paula is a songstress. So as we begin to close out, I'm going to ask them if they can just give us a little <coughs> bit of, uh, of poetry. I know I've invited Paula and Felix to come with me on several occasions when we're doing yeah. HIV and AIDS education. And uh, sometimes that, that can be, you know, a scary thing for even people in the <coughs> audience. So, you know, to be able for them to come and to show, you know, who they are, they are in their totality mentality, um, husband, wife, mother, grandparents, uh, and also poet and songstress. Now, Paula is recovering from a little bit of a throat thing. <laughs> So she was saying, you know, she might croak it out a little bit, but <laughs> but even at that, try. <laughs> you know, we're going to give it a try. So, uh, Felix, why don't you share with us some of your poetry, and let's see if we can uh, hear some from you also, Paul. Sure. This is called Discount. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, mm. I will dance like David danced. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I will um. dance like David dance. I will dance. Oh, I will dance. I will dance like David dance. I will dance. Ooh, I will dance. I will dance like David 
day. You know, when you think of a discount, you think of a price. When when I think of discount, I think of my life. You know, I feel that stigma, the film of enigma, painting me in patterns that I am not, nor will I adopt. I mean, I'm on sale in prison yards on the 1st and 15th. I'm stuck in neighborhood bars. I'm needy to greedy, got to be sleazy. If I'm on the street alone at night, you know I, I fit the description. I don't know what protection is. You see, there's really nothing to give when you put yourself on discount. So I want you to take yourself off sale and mark yourself at full price. I want you to see the stitch, the seam, the bias, the grade of a human at full price. It, it increases your value and it gives you room to walk and no one can ever talk at half of you again. You see, the more we see ourselves cheaply, the less we feel ourselves deeply and we pay for what we get. Don't, don't discount. Don't discount. Don't discount. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. For our <laughs> listeners, yeah, I think there is a strong message there. See yourself at full price. Don't be discounted. Knowledge is power on World AIDS Day and throughout the year. Knowledge is power. Take control. You don't have to be HIV, become HIV infected. And if you are, seek treatment. Not only survive with HIV, but to also thrive. learn to thrive. Oh, Thank you so much, Thank Paula. You. Thank you, Felix. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you so always. much. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs>